Emacs is so much more than a text editor, but I don't think enough people really focus on Emacs, the text editor. So today I'm going to go over the basics of Emacs as a text editor, such as navigating around in Emacs, you know, copying, pasting, you know, the basic functions of Emacs, the text editor. So this will be very useful for those of you that are just switching to Emacs, those of you thinking about switching to Emacs. Think of this as like the Vim tutor for Emacs. Now, the first thing we should do is, of course, run Emacs, open Emacs. How do you do that? Well, to open Emacs, you just type Emacs. Or if you have a specific document you want to work with, Emacs space name of document. When you got Emacs open, the first thing I'm going to do, though, is because I'm recording my screen, and I know a lot of you guys are going to watch this video on small form factor devices like cell phones, the font may be a little small for you guys to read on those devices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit. To zoom in and out in Emacs, you do this by Control X and then Control Plus to zoom in. Control Plus to keep zooming in. You want to zoom out? Control X, Control Minus to zoom out. Control X, Control Minus. Control X, Control Plus to zoom back in. To open a document in Emacs, what you would do is you would open the file manager inside Emacs called DeerEd, which stands for Directory Editor. And to open that, you type Control X, Control F. And then the name of the document you want to open, if you know a specific path to a document, such as my rc.lua file, you know, which I'm already in. Or if you don't have a specific document in mind, you can actually open up a directory, like my home directory. Just hit enter and it opens Dear Ed here inside my home directory. So this is basically Emacs as a file manager. From here, you could navigate. Typical navigation keys in Emacs are Control N for next, Control P for previous. So Control N, you know, moves you down. Control P moves you back up. When you find a document that you want to work with, you just hit enter and it opens that document. If you want to close that document, Control X, Control C will close it. It's going to ask you, do you want to save? Y for yes. And we have closed Emacs. Let me reopen Emacs. So I'm going to open my awesome config again. Basic navigation inside Emacs. Again, Control N for next, move, moving down to the next line. Control P, moving up to the previous line. Control F, forward. Control B, backwards. If you want to move forward and backward by word instead of control F and control B, you would do meta F and meta B, which is alt, the alt key. So meta F moves forward by word and meta B moves backwards by word. To get to the end of the line, control E gets you to the end of a line. Control A gets you back to the beginning of the line. Control E, end, control A to the beginning. You could do meta A and meta E to move forwards and backwards by sentence. So meta E takes you to the end of the sentence, not the end of the line. Meta A takes you back to the beginning of the sentence. Again, the beginning of the sentence, not the beginning of the line. Meta and the curly brackets takes you forward and backwards by paragraph. So meta and then the closing curly brackets takes you forward by paragraph. Meta and the opening curly brackets takes you back to the previous paragraph. To get to the beginning of a document, you would do meta and then the opening angle brackets. To get to the end, you would do meta and the closing angle brackets. So again, meta and then the less than sign gets you to the top. Meta and the greater than sign gets you to the bottom. To go to a specific line, you would do meta G and then G. And then it's you get a prompt at the bo bottom here in Emacs. It says go to line colon. What line do you want to go to? How about line 20? Hit enter, and it takes you to line 20. So meta G, G, what line do you want to go to? Line 1 takes me to back to line 1. Now, it can be cumbersome to move by, you know, control N and control P and control F and control B, you know, one character at a time, but you can do these by multiples, you know, you can set a number, how many lines you want to move down, how many lines you want to move up, how many characters you want to move forward. And how you do this is you use escape and then type a number. How about 10? And then control N. It moves you down 10 lines. Let's try that one more time. So how about escape 5 and then control F to move forward 5 characters. Let's talk about cut, copy, and paste. This is probably one of the more confusing things to new Emacs users is how you cut, copy, and paste. Now, first of all, you need to select something to copy and paste. Well, you know, I could just use the mouse and select, you know, 
a, a character or a entire word or entire sentence or a paragraph and you can do it in a graphical sort of way but you don't have to do it in such a way you could also just do control space and then you know with the arrow keys or the navigation keys such as control f to you know forward or control b to back or control n you know you could select whatever it is that you want to copy now once you find something that you want to copy meta w so meta w we copied that. Now, where do we want to paste that? I don't know. If I wanted to, I could paste it right here. And to paste, control Y, paste. Now, of course, I just completely butchered my awesome config file. I need to undo that. To undo anything in Emacs, control X, U, un undoes it. <laughs> Is that a word? Undoes it? So again, meta W copies it. But what if we wanted to cut? Well, you know, if I wanted to cut this word instead of meta W, how about control W? That cuts it, well, up to the cursor. It didn't cut the entire thing. Let me control X, U to undo. Let me select the entire word and control W. And now I've cut that entire word. And again, if I wanted to, I could go up here and control Y you know, to paste. Control X, U to undo. If you are in the middle of a line, say I'm on the M here uh, on the word manager in that line. If I want to cut everything starting with my cursor all the way to the end of that line, control K cuts to the end of the line. Control X, U to undo. If I want to cut the line going backwards, Control X and then backspace. Cuts everything the other direction. Another neat trick you can do is you can cut everything from the cursor until the next appearance of a certain character. So if I wanted to cut everything from the cursor that's sitting on M in the word manager all the way until the first occurrence of, I don't know, the letter F, how you would do that is you would do meta Z and then whatever character, F. And it cuts everything until the first appearance of F, including the letter F. If you want to delete multiple words, for example, say I wanted to delete, I don't know, how about window manager, two words. You would do that by doing escape two for two, and then escape D for delete. Control X, U to undo. Once again, we could escape 10, and then escape D to delete 10 words. Now all this copying and pasting we've been doing, Emacs saves all that stuff to a buffer that it calls the kill ring. And you can actually go and view the kill ring and get all the stuff you've been uh, copying and yanking and, and cutting and everything. How do you get to that kill ring buffer? Well, you do control H, then the letter V by itself. And you see, describe the variable we're looking for. We are looking for kill dash ring. Hit enter. And it opens, it actually splits the screen and in the bottom pane here, this is actually our kill buffer. And you can see some of the stuff that I have cut in the last few hours of playing with Emacs. I've actually got a, a few different documents open in Emacs right now, other than the one I've been working on. If I want to get rid of this frame, by the way, I could control X and then zero. Now you can cycle through some of the stuff in the kill ring when you're pasting in Emacs. So one of the neat things, let me get to a blank line, control Y to paste like the last thing I copied or whatever. But if I wanted to, I could escape and then Y and cycle through some of the other stuff in the kill ring. Escape Y. You know, this, this is some of the other stuff I've copied and pasted. We keep talking about buffers, by the way, to switch to a different buffer instead of the buffer I'm currently in, which has my awesome config file, the rc.luof. I could switch to a different buffer with control X, B, and then it's going to ask me switch to which buffer. Is kill ring still an option? Kill ring. No, but we created a new buffer called kill ring. Let me get out of this buffer we just created with control X, K to kill the buffer. And it's going to ask which one we want to kill. I want to kill that one that I called kill ring. You know what? I'm not sure what buffers are open. How about control X, control B? And it will actually list all the currently available buffers. If I wanted to, I could just click one and go to that. You know, if I wanted to open dear ed at the dot config directory, remember we did that earlier in the video. It's still there. Control X and zero again to close the split. Case changing in Emacs is pretty simple. Say I wanted to put awesome in all caps rather than all lowercase. So I've highlighted that word, or just the beginning of the word, right? The cursor is on the beginning of the word. Meta U changes awesome to all caps awesome. Now if I wanted to, I could go back to awesome and ML puts it back to all lowercase. If I just wanted to capitalize the first letter of the word, then you would do meta C for capitalize. And you see now awesome 
is capitalized. Again, meta L puts it all back to lowercase. Emacs allows you to run a spell check. So to run a spell check, what you would do is meta and then the dollar symbol on the word you're on, and it will tell you if it's spelled correctly. You see at the prompt at the bottom, I had awesome is correct. Now to use the spell check, you need some kind of spell checking program installed on your system that's compatible with Emacs. Uh, the one most people seem to recommend is called a spell. So what I would do is I would install a program called a spell. Uh, in the Arch repository, it is called a spell dash en for English. Install that package, and now you have a spell check inside Emacs. For example, I could spell check the word distro tube. That should come back as a fail because it's not a real word, right? So again, meta dollar symbol highlights the word, and it's basically warning me that I'm probably looking for distribute, distributor, distrait, distraught, or disordered, and I could pick one, so I could type zero right here on the keyboard. And it changes distro tube to distribute, but of course, control X U to undo that. Now, if you want to do a quick search query and maybe a, a search and replace, what you would do is meta percent sign, and then it's going to ask you for what do you want to replace. It's asking query replace colon, and then you have a prompt. I want to replace, how about my last name, Taylor? Hit enter. What do you want to replace it with? How about Smith? And it's asking me, do I really want to replace that? Type Y for yes. And you see, I just replaced Taylor with Smith. Of course, that's not really my name, so Control X U to undo. To search forward through a document, you would do Control S, and then you get I search colon at the bottom. It's asking you, what do you want to search for? I want to search for the word awesome. And then just keep Control S to keep going forward to every instance of awesome in this document. Control R would go in reverse, by the way. You could also just start, if I hit return, by the way, on the keyboard, it'll end that search, but you could actually just start with Control R if you wanted to search, you know, in a reverse direction, and then keep Control R to keep going through the document in reverse. One of the things you'll often do in Emacs is work on more than one document at a time. So we should talk about vertical splits and horizontal splits. Let's start with a horizontal split. The horizontal split is control X and then two, and it splits Emacs into two different panes where you can have two different documents in each pane. If I wanted to, I could go down into this bottom pane and I could control X, control F again to get the file manager. And if I wanted to, you know, open a different document, maybe my bash RC file, for example, I can open a different document in the bottom pane. Uh, again, to close that bottom pane, control X zero will close the split that you were currently working in. Now, if I wanted to do a vertical split, control X three does a vertical split. And again, I could go into either pane and open the file manager. And again, open any document I wanted such as my X resources file. And there you have that. Control X and zero to get out of that split. One other neat little trick is let's do that vertical split one more time. Control X and three. And now I have two panes. I'm currently in the left hand pane, but I want to open something in the right hand pane. You could do Control X for F and it's going to open file in other window. You see the prompt at the bottom. So now if I wanted to, I could open up, oh, I don't know. How about my Qtile config? And it opens my Qtile config here in the right hand pane without me having to, you know, hit a key binding to get the cursor over there or me moving the mouse to get over there. I just have a key binding to open a window in the other frame. So again, if you want to open a window in the frame that you're not working in, control X and then 4F. I haven't mentioned, by the way, how to get between the frames with just the keyboard. Control X O. So Control X O tabs over to the other frame. Control X O gets you back to the frame. Control X O to the other frame. Control X O brings me back. Let's save and exit. So I don't know if I've boogered up my uh, awesome config file. So I will Control X, Control C to close it. It's going to ask me, do I want to save it? Absolutely not. <laughs> so that would be how you close it. Now, if you actually did want to save something, for example, let me open up something I haven't altered. This is my DWM config file. Typically, you would want to save something before you close it. You would control X, control S to save. And then you would control X, control C to close the document. So that was a very quick tutorial on how to use Emacs as a text editor. We didn't cover everything. It's impossible to cover everything as far as text editing in Emacs in one video, unless it's several hours long. But I tried to condense 
as much as I could in a short amount of time really to cover the basics just so if you want to try out Emacs if you know everything that I just discussed you're probably good and you're, you're, there's probably nothing that you're going to be really wanting for. Um, and now if you want to get into more advanced stuff, you know, searching and replacing with regular expressions and with macros and stuff like that, we, we might discuss some of that on future videos. But for right now, that should serve as a very much a Vim Tutor like experience in Emacs. Now, before I go, this show was made possible by Ansem, Chris, Daniel, David, DJ, Stallman, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, Corbinian, Lambda, Liam, Mitchell, Natek, Rob, Robert, Sean, and Willie. These guys are the producers of the show. Without these guys, this episode about the basics of Emacs as a text editor wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by all those other names you see on the screen, all those fine ladies and gentlemen that help support my work over on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. Thank you.